We're now looking at our assessment protocol for a patient who's come to you who's in her first trimester of pregnancy. Now, a patient is in her first trimester of pregnancy for us means that she's anywhere from conception to 12 weeks. And so what we want to do is we want to assess various systems of her body to see whether or not we come across anything that needs to be corrected and that should be corrected now to ensure that as she moves throughout her pregnancy, she's going to be healthy and happy and comfortable and be in her best optimal health so that when she goes into her delivery of the baby that everything goes as smoothly as possible. So while your patient is still slim and she's not experiencing edema or changes in pressure within her abdomen as the fetus grows, now is actually the best time to be able to come in and intervene and correct any potential problems. So let's look a little bit at what we're going to start assessing when we're looking with our pregnant patient. After taking a detailed history of her medical history, any potential past trauma or any potential past back pain or even any potential past cranial trauma, it's important to be able to identify these now because we know that the entire hormonal system that is going to control and tell the uterus what to do throughout the pregnancy is controlled by the pituitary gland which sits on the sphenoid and which is housed within the cranium. So it stands to reason that ensuring that the cranial mechanism is functioning properly and is not carrying any residual torsions or leftover problems or blockages from any previous injuries, now is the time to be able to check for that and correct for that in any subsequent treatments during that first trimester if need be. So when you're assessing your patient, you're going to be first of all assessing for any compaction in the suboccipital area. You want to make sure that this zone is open. Why? So that not only can blood the venous system drain, but also so that the cerebral spinal fluid, when it drains down into the third and fourth ventricle, then has an opening to be able to exit. And we know that the suboccipital region, if it's compacted, can actually impede venous and cerebral spinal fluid drainage. So our first thing is to ensure that we have good space between the occipital base and the first cervical vertebrae. And if there's any misalignment in that sense, then you might need to correct that. And what I find in my patient here is that she's actually experiencing a bit of a torsion, whereby the right side of her occiput is sitting crooked and a little bit rotated externally, in relation to her right side, which is rotating internally. So we have the beginnings of the sign of a cranial torsion. This means that she has good drainage coming down on the, on the right side, but not so well on the left. So this is the type of thing that you'll want to correct during her first trimester of pregnancy. Secondly, we're going to check for overall functioning and amplitude of the craniosacral mechanism. So we want to ensure that the occiput in relation to the sphenoid bone has full amplitude whereby they come together when they go into flexion and they come apart when they go into extension. So first you can assess your occiput on its own and you can listen and feel for its degree or range of motion. In cranial osteopathy we refer to it as amplitude. The occiput's ability to roll into extension so sure enough, on this right side, where she is more internally rotated, the occiput does not have full amplitude. It's not able to rotate externally as much. The right side is very open. So there's some correcting that needs to be done in terms of amplitude of range of motion of the occipital base as it goes into flexion and extension. If we verify the sphenoid, we also need to feel for flexion as it goes down and extension as it comes back up. So it's not as easy to palpate and feel for the sphenoid bone because there's only a very small portion of the greater wing of the sphenoid that comes up that we can contact in the area of the temple. So you have to have some experience in cranial osteopathy in order to be able to assess and feel for movement of the sphenoid, but also this movement of the sphenoid in relation to the occiput. So I always recommend verifying the occipital base, the alignment of the occiput on the first cervical vertebrae, range of motion of the occiput itself, 
range of motion of the sphenoid, and then range of motion of the sphenoid in relation to the occiput to be sure that they are moving together in unison as they come together in flexion and as they come apart in extension. So assessing for these three aspects of the cranial mechanism and correcting them is going to be very important in ensuring as your patient moves throughout her pregnancy that the sphenoid is able to send those hormones that control the pregnancy down to the, the pelvis in order for it to be able to function properly. So doing a proper cranial assessment is going to be your first step in your assessment.